I got a full scholarship to college to go to acting school, to go to a very prestigious school that I will remain nameless. And I uh, had a terrible time. It was awful. And I dropped out. And the day that I dropped out of theater school, after I'd only been there about four months, I walked to the second city and I signed up for improv classes. And it was within a year of signing up for classes that I got hired to the touring company in the second city, which I then did for three and a half years. Uh, I was the youngest uh, female ever hired to the touring company. The only younger person was uh, Mike Myers. May he... Uh, I was going to say, may he rest. He's so alive. Um, <laughs> bless him. But yeah, so I, uh, I did that for three and a half years. And then I did the, the Second City Toronto main stage for two years. Then I did the Second City Chicago main stage for two years. Uh, so did a lot. I, you know, I, I often talk about how I didn't technically go to post-secondary. I dropped out of college. But then I'm like, I basically have a PhD in sketch comedy and improv at this point. I mean... It was like, yeah, I think it was eight years total. I could be a doctor. I, I, have base, I have a PhD in comedy. You know, I think it's one of those things where I had a great life in Canada. I was a working actor. I made a great living, but there's kind of a ceiling. This is what we all know. Like it's, you know, you could have an amazing career. I mean, I was on four television shows. I remember in the same night one night, I was like flipping through and I was like, huh, my voice is on this cartoon show. I'm a guest star on this other one. I'm a lead on this other one. And I'm on this game show. It was like, if I was in America and I was on four shows that were airing at the exact same time, first of all, they won't let that happen here. You get contracted out the wazoo. But I was like, maybe, maybe I should see how that would go. Because if I've got four at once here, I could probably roll the dice about getting one down there. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's always that siren song call from America, you know, for actors, I think in Canada, you always want to know, you never want to, you know, not go and not try and then spend the rest of your life going, man, maybe I should have tried pilot season in one more year. You know, I was very fortunate that I booked something fairly early in my trips to LA kind of thing. I know a lot of other people can come back more and more and more and more. Um, but yeah, I think it's just, you, you just, you don't want to leave that stone unturned. You know, I think a big part of when you're getting into, in my case, like the improv world is, you know, I didn't really know many people. Again, I had dropped out of theater school and you automatically have this community. I mean, some of the people that I met in those first few weeks of even trying improv classes are still my friends now, 15, 17 years later. Um, what's cool about it is, is that you're doing this weird thing together. Improv especially, you're you're literally adults that are playing make-believe. This is what we're doing for fun. And so it attracts a very interesting dichotomy of people who are A, interested in that um, in some sort of real way, and B, who often are looking for as much community as they are the actual art form. So, I mean, those just become your people. It just becomes, you know, people always say like, how do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, the community, the, the comedy community, like you all kind of know each other. And I think that in an industry where there is so much unknown, like not even just being an actor, but being a comedian or a comedic actor, any one of those kind of, you know, undersets of the giant acting umbrella, there's so much unknown and there's so few jobs for a lot of time that you kind of need to have other people that you're there with. You're kind of like, you know, in the trenches. You know, I often talk about too, like Second City specifically, even if you weren't on stage with someone specific, you have this unsaid shorthand with people that you'll meet who are also alumni. I remember the first time I met Keegan-Michael Key, I was like, hey, I'm Lauren, I'm a Second City alum. And he literally went, family, and like gave me this big hug. Because it's like, again, you know, even if you've never met before, you know all the same people, you've been through the same experiences. Those writing processes are very, very soul crushing in many ways. Um, so you can just relate to each other. And I think that's really important. Again, I think it's almost as important as the actual work you're doing. The one thing that social media has done in terms of the comedy world has given a voice so that anybody can be a comedian. So, you know, back in my day, uh, there's the joke, right? The like pat cliche joke that it's like, oh, everybody's a comedian. Well, now with social media, anybody can be. So I remember Vine was a huge thing. You know, I know that doesn't exist anymore, but when that first came out, all of a sudden, everybody who ever had a funny idea ever in their life had a venue for it, which was new. I mean, now, YouTube, I mean, there's been times where it's like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, yes, you're on a show, but oh, this guy on YouTube has like 200 million viewers. And I'm like, I've never heard of this person before. It's just, 
what's cool about it is, is that it's allowed for that. And it's allowed people who are really talented to shine young people, you know, people who perhaps are growing up in places, not in big cities that maybe don't have opportunity. It gives them a kind of platform, which is amazing. But for the rest of us, it's like, come on, we don't need any more competition out there. Let us do what we do.